Hi, and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark. I am your host, and joining us today is Mark Caveney, and Mark is from SKF. Mark, how you doing? Good morning, Tom. Doing great. Thanks. All right. Today, we're going to learn how to properly mount a spherical roller bearing with a tapered bore on an adapter sleeve. And Mark, you're going to take us through the entire process. Let's get started. Okay. The first step, though, Tom, in any job, we want to make sure that we've got the proper PPE. And in this case, it's going to be our safety glasses. Personal protective equipment. Absolutely. Always important. All right. There are several different um, methods that can be used to mount this bearing on a shaft, but today we're going to utilize the mechanical drive-up method. Okay. Which is actually the most common method that is used Did you say today. shaft? I did. Shut your mouth. Shut your okay. mouth. Okay. Here we go. All right, what do we do first? Well, the first step is you want to check the shaft to make sure that there's no rust or burrs around the shaft. Okay, we've got our sleeve here, Tom. So mm -hmm. what we're going to do is we're going to put our sleeve on the shaft mm -hmm. again, and we're going to up, just apply a real light coating of oil on the mating surfaces. Right. This way, it will make bearing installation and removal just a little bit easier. Okay, now I just noticed that we've got the bearing here that's all wrapped up and ready to go. And it sure so is. We're good. Okay, okay. wait a minute. Why is it uh, covered in plastic and protected like that? Tom, that's a great question. What you've got is you've got airborne contamination mm -hmm. and contamination from the work environment. And okay. what we want to do is we want to try to leave this bearing and keep it protected for as long as we can so that those contaminations won't get in and maybe even cause a premature bearing failure. Our next step, Tom, is we're going to check what we call the bench clearance, and that is the unmounted radial internal clearance of the bearing. Okay. And how are we going to check that? We're going to check that with some feeler gauges. Nice. Based on the bearing part number, we know what the values are going to be and where we're going to have our starting point and our finishing point. All right. We're going to compare those values. Because we actually have a card that we do that. We do. Okay. And based on this bearing part number, we know where our starting point is, which is going to be an 80 millimeter bore and a C3 bearing. So we're going to come across. We know what our values are. We check that with our feeler gauges, and then we're ready to go because we know how much we're going to take out. And, and that's really important. Always look for the values on the clearance card. Absolutely. Okay. So what I'm going to do, since we know that the values are between 37 and 47, we're going to start at about a 45 and see how that is. Sweet. And you don't want to force it through. You just want to try to just work it a little bit. So okay. we know that the 45 is not going to work. Okay. So let's try a 40. All right. Based on that, we're getting a nice little movement on that. So we're going to say that this value of the bearing, unmounted, is 40 thou. Okay. Based on that then, we're going to take it, we're going to turn our card over, and we're going to look at how much we have to take out of the bearing. We've got an 80 millimeter bore, so we're going to take out anywhere between 15 and 25. All right. So based on the 40, taking out 15, we've got to get this down to at least 25 at a minimum. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, too much, it'll wobble. Absolutely. Too tight, friction and smoke, it's got to be just right. It absolutely does, Tom. Great okay. questions. So let's go ahead and mount that bearing up on our adapter sleeve. All right, here we go. Um, while you're putting that on, I'm kind of curious why you didn't use the uh, lock nut washer, otherwise known as a hubcap for one of the new Fiat's. Um, how come this doesn't go on first? It's a great question, Tom. During the mechanical drive-up method, if you would have that lock washer in its place, uh -huh. what could happen is either the, the spanner wrench or even the sledge, there's a possibility that it could hit that washer, damage it, or even take a part of that washer, break it off, and it could get inside the bearing. Yeah, not good. No. So we're going to leave that washer off till a couple uh, steps down the line, okay? okay so we've got our nut on. We've yeah, snugged it. But you've mentioned the hook spanner wrench now. Absolutely. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that, because that's a tool you don't see in the average toolbox. It's not. Again, in this case, we're using a hook spanner wrench, which is designed to go right around the nut. Okay, you see how that fits in the grooves there. It does. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that, we're going to use our hammer. As you can see, all of the force and everything is away from the bearing. Okay. We're tightening that nut. As we're tightening that nut, it's pushing that bearing up on the sleeve, and it's taking that clearance out. So intermittently, we're going to use our feeler gauges. We're mm -hmm. going to continue to check to get to that, but right there, where we're using the hook spanner wrench as opposed to using a hammer and a drift where you could do some damage to the nut or again, even chip that nut, and as a part of that contamination from that nut can get inside, and again, could cause that bearing. As a matter of fact, 16% of all premature bearing failures are due to the improper installation of the bearing. So you want to get it right the first time? We sure do. That's exactly right, Tom. So now we're going to back our lock nut off. All right. Again, utilizing the hook spanner wrench. Okay. I'm hoping that this time we're going to be using the lock nut one. Absolutely. Okay, good. So we're going to take our nut off. Okay. We're going to apply the lock washer. This will fit right into the groove on the sleeve. 
Again, chamfer end in on the lock nut. Okay, now there's there's got to be a reason why you tighten that up first and now you're putting the lock washer on. Absolutely. It's got to do something with maybe keeping the bearing steady, correct? It's exactly what we're doing. So okay. now we've got that lock washer in its place. We're going to take the lock nut. We're not going to have to tighten that as much as we did before because the clearance is already taken out of the bearing. So we're just going to tighten that lock nut enough to where it comes around. As you can see, there's four little grooves in the lock nut. Okay, I see. And these tabs on the washer, we're going to get that to the spot where you can take it. You're going to tap that tab down on the washer. Hold it and secure. And that's exactly what it's doing. It's securing that lock nut because you have a tendency as that bearing is moving through vibration. If the lock nut comes off of the sleeve, if it's not properly secure, the bearing will also come off. And all of our good work would be for nothing. Thus the importance of securing the lock washer. Sure is. Awesome. Well, Mark, Tom, thank you thank so you much. Very much. We really appreciate it. For more information, contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location. And we hope today's demonstration will help you with your practical application. As always, don't forget, PPE, personal protective equipment, is always important. Look for other how-to videos from Motion Industries as well. I'm Tom Clark. I'm your host. Thanks for watching.